So today I'm reviewing Halloween, the sequel to Halloween. No, not that sequel, not Halloween 2, the new Halloween. No, not that one. That one was a reboot, not a sequel. I'm talking about the sequel to Halloween that wasn't released in 1981. No, not that one. That one's a sequel to the reboot. We're talking about the film Halloween, which is a sequel to the film Halloween, but isn't either Halloween or Halloween. Get it? Because I don't. Okay, so just for complete clarity, we're talking about the 2018 Halloween. The one Danny McBride helped write. Yeah, I know, that is kind of weird, isn't it? Weirdness of that little tidbit aside, though, Halloween, yes, this one, is, in my humble opinion, fucking fantastic. Now, okay, look, before I start, because people will pull me up on this, I'm gonna say I'm biased on this one. I have such a deeply embedded fondness of the first film that I can't help but come at this movie with the perspective of being a huge fan of the original, possibly somewhat colouring my viewing experience. So if you're coming here for an objective review, well, one, bias is inherently existent in all reviews, in fact it's actually what makes reviews good because you're literally hearing from a perspective that isn't your own, all film reviews are opinion and thus subjective anyway. This is literally just going to be my thoughts on the film, the same as any other reviewer would do. I just feel the need to specifically state that for the criticism should be objective guys that always seem to pop up whenever I have strong opinions, as I feel like that particular group will use my giddy adoration here combined with my self-proclaimed fan status as some kind of gotcha to prove that I don't pass a non-existent objectivity test to qualify me as a real film critic. Like, ha! He likes this film and it isn't based on purely objective factors. Which, like, well, yeah, obviously. And two, I state this in my defense preemptively against those guys, as I am well aware that this is going to be a particularly enthusiastic and some would argue fanboyish opinion. That's not to say I'm not going to give it my usual level of criticism and analysis you would expect of any other review I do, but it is to say that I'm going to start this review by gleefully saying, I love this. I loved it so much. I want to hug everyone involved and tell them well done and thank you from the bottom of my heart. This film just feels so damn near perfect to me. I adore it to the point that it has almost completely dominated my thoughts since watching it and all I can think about is how much I want to watch it again. Ignoring the continuity of every other single film in the franchise apart from the very first, this new movie takes place 40 years after the events of the original. Laurie Strode, the sole survivor of Michael Myers' twisted 1978 massacre portrayed by Jamie Lee Curtis, has grown into a paranoid shut-in who has alienated her family over her obsession with the man that almost killed her. Spending her years preparing for the possibility of him breaking out of his mental institution to come back and finish her off. While this causes a great deal of tension between her and, well, literally everyone else on the planet who perceives her as this abrasive trauma victim with a chip on her shoulder, Laurie is vindicated when, surprise surprise, Michael does in fact escape and immediately makes a beeline for Haddonfield, the site of his first massacre, presumably to finish what he started all those years ago and causing many instances of chaos and brutal violence in these small streets as he embarks on his journey. All this plays out in a way that not only feels like the definitive evolution of these characters in a narrative that effortlessly dances along the line between fan service throwback homages and something new and different, while also injecting the edge that has sorely been missing from this series for literally decades now. Okay, here's my time to fanboy. Michael Myers is a fucking amazing villain. In fact, he's literally my favourite of all of the classic horror icons people often group together. It's not that his contemporaries are in any way bad characters, and guys like Freddy, Jason, Leatherface and all that certainly have their fair share of iconic and great movies between them, but Myers is at least to me on a whole different level. There's nothing supernatural about him, there's no gross overtness that comes with his character, there's no real gimmick for lack of a better word. I mean sure he has the mask, but where other villains are over the top, Michael is subdued, terrifying in his simplicity. He isn't a crazy skin-wearing cannibal, he's not a dream-invading demon, he isn't a reanimated zombie with mother issues or a tongue-in-cheek satire acknowledgement of slasher tropes. He is the trope. He's just a killer. A normal dude. Like you and me, except driven by an almost robotic-like programming that demands him to murder. 
The only moment of humanity or motion he ever even comes close to displaying is found exclusively in the tiny lingering stares he'll give to a victim he is violently slain, as if pondering over his art or observing the details of a butterfly collection before resuming into his unconditional pursuit of brutality. His motivations are mysterious. We know he wants to kill, but why? He doesn't seem to take pleasure in the violence, he doesn't toy with his victims or express any joy at their pain. Rather, he seems to be fixated on the exact level of murder that sits at the crossroads between brutality and efficiency. Torture and torment are not part of his modus operandi. He stalks, he slays, he moves on. And it's this kind of violence combined with his imposing figure, unrelenting pursuit and unwillingness to die that makes him such a terrifying foe. Though the character certainly has some artistic license in terms of his strength and the lengths of damage which he can withstand, he is otherwise scarily grounded in reality. There is nothing particularly special about Michael Myers, and that's what makes him special. This man could exist. He could be watching you. He could be behind you. Right now! I mean, he isn't, but he could be. And it's this uncomfortable notion presented through Carpenter's excellent use of music, sound design and voyeuristic cinematography that made the first movie such a massive franchise spawning hit. In the time since the genre powerhouse of the original debuted, however, the franchise that followed has seemingly done everything it possibly can to absolutely destroy any and all mystique the character of Michael once had. We've been given familial relationship twists to explain his motivations, we've seen him beheaded, technically not him, oh this series is so convoluted, we've seen his childhood and no, none of that please. I don't want to know anything about this man, the more I know the less I'm interested. Hell, just keep everything about him in the shadows, both symbolically and literally. Half the time I don't even want to see the guy on screen, never mind having a punch up with professional rapper Buster Rhymes. Thank God then that this new movie understands Michael Myers, hand waving away all the ill informed creative decisions of the past with a simple line and then delivering on a Michael who's as enigmatic and horrifying as he once was way back in 1978. It. This is glorious. And it could easily have been just that and a lot of people would have been satisfied. Give us another fun slasher with the Michael we've been missing for decades and the majority of people leave the cinema happy. But it is so much more than that. So look, I have kind of a weird stance on horror in that I know lots of people predominantly go to horror films for the thrill of being scared, right? But like, I could not give a shit if a horror film scares me, I just really don't care. If it does, great. And there were times when Halloween did certainly make me jump or have me tensing on the edge of my seat, and I do appreciate there's a thrill in that, but being scared has never been my main gratification of the genre. Just being scary isn't enough for me. If a film is just terrifying, then I'll probably come away thinking it was only okay. Rather, I like my horror films to give me a good story and explore themes through darker narratives. This film falls into that latter camp for me. It doesn't just scare, although it is definitely capable of that, but it has something to say. In this film, Michael isn't even the most compelling character by a long shot. Laurie is, and it's her narrative that makes me adore this film so much. Laurie in this movie is the somewhat manic, paranoid but prepared woman whose past tragedy has had a rippling effect on not just her but everyone she loves, feels like the most natural evolution of that character. And amongst all the craziness of brutal kills and iconic masked murderers, the themes of the film are incredibly human and grounded. This movie is about trauma. It wants to explore the idea of trauma and victimhood, how it can shape and change people but also fight back against the idea that it has to define us. Laurie doesn't want to kill Michael because she's scared of him. In many ways, she's shown to be extremely fearless in her willingness to combat him. She doesn't want to kill him out of revenge. There's never a point where she talks of avenging her fallen teenage friends. Laurie wants to kill Michael for Laurie. Laurie wants to kill Michael because even though he's technically been out of her life for 40 years now, he still has this uncomfortable hold over her entire being. 
one that informs her life and makes her hidden away hermit, that informs her relationships and pushes her family away who become anxious of her overprotectiveness and inherit some of the trauma Laurie has been forced against her will to carry for all these decades, one that informs how people see her. Everyone is telling her to move on and get over her past, but her past is all anyone seems to want to talk about. Podcasters, doctors, police, her granddaughter's random friends. All they think of in terms of Laurie is her relationship to Michael. Laurie has essentially lost her identity to victimhood. She's not Laurie Strode, loving mother or teacher or even person. She's Laurie Strode, the survivor of the Halloween massacre. And Jamie Lee Curtis does an unbelievably brilliant performance that's this wonderful combination of tragic and empowering and carries successfully all the emotion that comes with these clashing ideas. Tragic because she's a victim but she doesn't want to be and empowering because she uses her trauma and victimhood not as weights that weaken her but as a crutch for strength as a foundation on which to build a woman who is a far cry from the frightened teenage girl of 1978. She becomes a protector, a fighter, she learns from her trauma, and that last one's a really strong theme sold throughout the film through its visuals. There are multiple instances in which the iconography of Michael Myers is recreated, but with Laurie in his place. She's literally using what her trauma taught her to essentially save her family and herself, and that's fucking great! This is a tale of someone who's scared of the boogeyman and evolves to become the thing the boogeyman should be afraid of. And oh my god, that's such good storytelling. And I can appreciate that on many levels, both as a fan of the franchise who appreciates the winky acknowledgements to the past, but even more so as someone who just likes films and character arcs and good narratives. And they've managed to pull off this exceptional storytelling in a film that feels so inherently Halloween! Everything from the presence of Myers to the tense dread of the lingering tracking shots to the unbelievably fantastic music that plays and experiments with the original score in new and interesting ways and it's so good and John Carpenter, god damn it, I want to kiss you and your talented moustache and oh, I love everything about this! Literally, the only things I would change about this film is there's unfortunately a really quite rubbish middle act twist that I wish so badly wasn't there because it stands out like a horrible blemish on an otherwise exceptional film. And one other thing I'd maybe change from my own personal stance is I kind of thought the first kill was a little too uncomfortable for its own good. I mean, I get it's a horror, and you're probably going to call me a cook or whatever for complaining about being uneasy in a horror film, but it's not that I'm bothered by fictional depictions of violence so much as in this instance who that violence was inflicted upon. I don't know, that's just a personal thing. It just touched a nerve very briefly. Oh, and I also wouldn't give it a sequel, because for me this is a perfect conclusion and there's no way I really want to go with these characters from here. I feel like the story is kind of wrapped up, but this film is making mad bank, so it will inevitably happen. Can't really hold that against this movie though. And to be honest, I suppose if you really want to spiritually honour the original film, then what better way to do it than to artificially force a slew of sequels with increasingly diminishing returns. It's kind of Halloween's thing. Other than those little niggling issues, however, I couldn't have asked for a better Halloween follow-up. It blew well past my expectations. In fact, the opening titles of this movie encapsulate perfectly how I feel about it. Let me explain. If you recall the opening titles of the original, the main theme plays eerily over the image of a dimly lit grinning pumpkin carving. This film starts very similarly. But the pumpkin here is smashed and gross and worthless from dirt and rot and age seeping away at it over time. But slowly we realise the image of this rotten old pumpkin is being played in reverse and we watch as Carpenter's eerie score accompanies the visual of this pumpkin, the symbol of this franchise going back to its beginning and slowly being restored to its former glory. Mmm... Halloween is back and it's amazing. I look forward to two years from now when we review the inevitably not so good Halloween 2. No, not that one.